All right, we're going to do the uh, January 2012 short response answers for the Algebra 2 trigonometry regions. So, uh, let's start with number 28. You've got to find a solution to this. The first thing you got to do is set it equal to 0. Well, not equal to 0, but you're going to have to subtract this 5 over. Okay. Then set it equal to 0 and find the critical values, the turning points of the parabola. Okay. Find these, find these. Then you just need to test some points around them. And I chose negative 2, 0, and 6. You plug them into the original equation and you find out what happens. It turns out stuff in this territory works, stuff in this territory does not work, stuff in this territory works. So here's what the answer looks like if you were to graph it out on number line, and here's what it's written, what it looks like written out as a, an equation. Uh, 29. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to try and set this, get the radical on one side and, and numbers on the other. So subtract 4 over, divide by negative 1. Square both sides and try and solve for x. That's it. You, you, oh, I forgot. You know what? You should always check your answers just to make sure, in fact, um, especially with radicals because you could get an answer that does not work. Let's just make sure my answer of 7 works. Uh, there could be no solution to it, so that's going to be 2 times 7 minus 5. Close it off. Yeah, it works. So 1 equals 1. We're, we're all good. Uh, 30. Uh, you're just going to start at 1 and plug in integers up to whatever it is that tells you up over here. That's 3. So you plug in 1 here and 1 here. And then you add it to 2 plugged in here and here. Then you add that to 3 plugged in here and here. And then you just find out what the total is. 31. Uh, 31, this is a perfect cube. There's nothing more to do that. There's nothing more to it other than that. Uh, a, to the, a squared multiplied by itself three times is a to the sixth. B cubed multiplied by itself three times is b to the ninth. And negative 4 multiplied by itself three times is negative 64. <clears throat> 32 is a combination problem because it asks you how many different groups of 20 can be formed. Order does not matter, so you just use your calculator, 25C20. You do 25 math, go over to probability, NCR, plug in 20, hit enter, gives you the answer. Uh, for the following one, you use your calculator once again. We're going to clear it out. We're going to go into the y equals screen. We're going to type in our equation. 2 raised to the parentheses x plus 1 power, close it, minus 3. And then I'm going to go look in the table of values. Uh, and it wants me to just graph the ones from negative 2 to 2. So I wrote these coordinates down. I plotted them down. Piece of cake. 34. I took a cheap shortcut. 34. Here's a random point on the circle, but here's the center. So I just drew down a right triangle. You can always do this. Okay. Uh, and it turns out this is worth 2 and this is worth 3. Use Pythagorean theorem. Find out how much r squared is. You don't need to find r because, remember, the circle equation is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. Okay? So x minus negative 5 is x plus 5 squared plus y minus 2 squared equals, you know, 13. That's r squared. That's it. That's all there is to it. Draw a right triangle. Solve a way. Express the exact value of the cosecant of 60 with a rational denominator. Well, cosecant of 60 is the same thing as 1 over the sine of 60. Uh, sine 60 is red 3 over 2. If you didn't know that, then you should just remember some important things in your calculator, like the fact that if you plug sine 60 in, oops, you know what my problem is. I'm not in, rate, I'm not in degree mode. Got to be in degree mode when you do this. Uh, the sine of 60 degrees is 0 0.866. 0 0.866 is red 3 over 2. You're just going to have to remember that. Uh, one, 1 divided by red 3 over 2, right? Keep, change, flip. Rationalize that denominator by multiplying it by itself. There's your answer. 36. 36. Here's the triangle. First thing I did was try and figure out how much all the angles were. Like uh, 65. These guys are, you know, linear pair. So 180 minus 65 is 115. And then I have two angles in the triangle, so I'm going to get this other one up over here. This is 33. 
And now I've got 32 and 90 and 33, so this guy over here has to be 25. Then I blocked out this triangle, and I tried to solve for a side on this triangle, only because, for one reason or another, they gave me this 100 feet, and I wanted to try and use it. So I labeled this side x, and then I used the law of sines to find it. You know, 100 okay, is to the sine of 33, as x is to the sine of 115, you cross multiply, solve, you get x equals this. Don't round until the very end. Then what I said was, look, here's a big gigantic right triangle, okay? Big gigantic right triangle. So the sine of 32 equals the opposite side, the height of the tower, what I was looking for, divided by x. I know how much x is. Once again, I cross multiply, and boom, the tower is 88 feet. Okay, I'm not going to lie, this one's pretty hard. You know, this is logarithms. People have a lot of trouble with logarithms. Uh, in its log form, this is unsolvable. You need to, you need to uh, convert it into exponential form. So 4 to the 2.5 power equals x. 4 to this, this is the base, that's the exponent, this is the result. So you get 32. Then you do the same thing over here, right? y to the negative 3 halves power equals 125. And then you're kind of screwed. You're like, oh my god, what am I going to do? Well, we've got to get y by itself. So you raise both sides to the reciprocal of that power, because when this multiplies that, you get y to the first. And 125 to the negative 2 thirds, just use your calculator, 125 raised to the negative 2 thirds, make sure you put in parentheses, is 0.04. Divide them, you get 800. Number 38, number 38, we're going to have to do a regression, that means we've got to enter it in our calculator, which means we've got to hit stat, edit, and we're going to have to enter these things in. So, you know, enter them in, then we're going to go over into list two, we're going to do, whoops, sorry about that, okay. And then here's what you do. You hit stat, calc. We want a linear regression. We want an exponential regression. Exponential regression on L1, comma, L2. Boom. There it is. And so all you do is write that down. Write that down. Make sure you round to the nearest ten thousandth. Ten thousandths. That's tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousandths. Uh, and then to the 18th hour, well, it tells you in the directions that x is hour, so all you do is plug 18 in for x itself. Question number 39. 39 is always the toughest. It's worth the most points. Look, it's a huge factoring problem. So the first thing I did, instead of continuously writing out this thing in its factored form, is I took each one of these on the sidelines, and I broke them down, right? Factor this one by grouping. These guys have x squared in common. These guys have 6. Same thing in parentheses, they go together, x squared plus 6. These guys' greatest common factor is x, so it's x minus 4. Greatest common factor is 2, so it's x minus 2. Greatest common factor is x cubed, so it's x minus 3. These guys over here, multiplies to be negative 8, adds to be negative 2. You know the deal. And this one, difference of two perfect squares. Okay, so now it's all factored out, every last one of them. Okay, what you do is, I plug them back in. Remember, this is division, so it's keep, change, flip. And then I canceled, right? X minus 3 cancels with that. Uh, X plus 4 and the and 4 plus X, those guys are, are perfect. They're going to cancel. X minus 2's cancel. Over here, these guys are reversed. Whenever two things, two binomials are, are reversed by subtraction, right? This is cancel out to, it cancels out to 1 and this one to negative 1. It's a pattern you should just remember. Write all the things down that are left over. Simplify it as much as you can. That's it.